Hey guys, you're watching Ocarina Owl, the place you go to for fun ocarina tutorials, songs, and more. This video is lesson one for the double ocarina. Let's get started. <laughs> You're watching this video because you're one of two people. You either have a double ocarina and you're looking for more songs to play, or you're looking for a brief tutorial on how to play and improve your technique, or you are a person who owns a regular single chamber ocarina and is just curious as to what a double ocarina is and what it sounds like. A brief introduction addressing all these things would be that a double ocarina looks a little bit like this. It looks just like a normal ocarina, but it's got an additional chamber attached to it. Um, the double ocarina, as you can tell right here, has two mouthpieces. Its primary function is to extend the range of the ocarina, providing notes all the way from A3 to C6. This type that I'm showing you is a double alto C ocarina. Um, as far as recommendations, if you're interested in buying one, this is one that I recommend if you're very serious about getting a beautiful tone. This one I bought from the company Focalink Stein. Um, it is a straw fired ceramic and it has a very sweet sound. The thing I like about this ocarina is that it's built so that when you switch chambers it's very easy on the hand because it's built um, as you can see right over here with a flat ridge so that means that there is no um, difficulty in switching between chambers it's very simple to do if you're looking for a if you're looking for a better price model I recommend the um, plastic Double Alto C by STL. This ocarina, in addition to having the Triforce, is the same fingering system and the same model as my other ocarina, with one exception. This one is missing the sub hole for F sharp, which I'll talk about later. It doesn't make a huge difference, but this one is one of the lower end models and its price is a lot more accessible if you're interested in just trying what a double ocarina is. This is one of the cheapest but best sounding double ocarinas that I can recommend and it has a pretty good sound despite being uh, plastic material. Lastly, I would not recommend a double ocarina for a beginner that is looking to start ocarina. The double ocarina has a couple of technical nuances that can be quite challenging for a beginning beginner and can be quite discouraging as well if you don't know how to play a wind instrument or it's the first time you've ever played the double ocarina I definitely recommend that you start out with a single chamber first and then once you have mastered that you move on to a double ocarina alright with that out of the way let's begin lesson one for the double ocarina I've split this lesson into two parts I'm gonna start by going over the two octave C major scale and also by covering our first song, Song of Storms from Legend of Zelda. Before we start, I wanted to cover a difficulty that is unique to the double ocarina, and that is how to switch chambers. A lot of people, when they switch chamber, their natural inclination is to move their head as they're switching chambers. But the best way to switch chambers that is faster, and easier on your neck and won't accidentally bump your teeth in uh, is whenever you move from your wrist. When you move this way, just a little bit, I'm of course exaggerating, kind of like this, you just rock it a little bit. That's just the fastest way to switch chambers. You'll watch me prepare those fingers ahead of time as soon as I'm done playing on my left hand. Here's the two octave C major scale.
Song of Storms can actually be played on a single chamber 12 hole ocarina. If you're watching this and you have your own 12 hole ocarina, I've put a link to the music in the description. This is a quick sound sample of what Song of Storms sounds like at regular tempo. Here's the first phrase slowly with the chamber switch. 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 Notice that when you switch between high D to high E, you're still using your wrist change like this. Of course, this is exaggerated. You're more going to go like this. Practice that change just a little bit. Then, when you go from high E to C, you need to make sure that as soon as you hit your first high E, your thumb goes from high D to high C position while you're playing this chamber. So that would look like this. That way, your thumb is ready to play high C. I'll do it again so you can see it. Thumb goes back. Try it with me at a faster tempo, this time without the chamber switching. Keep working on the song until all of the chamber switching sounds very fluid. That's the next step. Now that you kind of get a hang of the chamber switch, try to connect the notes between the chamber switch. So for instance, from D to E. Or from E to C. If you can connect the chamber switching It'll sound just like a fluid melody with no chamber switching in between. If you'd like to practice with the sheet music, I've left a link in the description for the sheet music, uh, link, a link that goes to my webpage. Stay tuned for lesson two of the Devil Chamber Ocarina tutorial series. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, write a comment, or share with someone. If you'd like to support my channel, you can also visit my website, follow me on social media such as Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you very much. This has been Ocarina Owl, signing out. Until next time, guys.